Hello everybody, my name is Daniel Richardson and I'm WCPW Review Guy and I, I don't know about the UK but I know over here uh, it's a three day weekend for this guy, Labor Day weekend. Pretty happy, pretty happy, which I'm sorry this video is probably going out a little bit later than it normally does on Sunday but uh, this guy, he's, he's making the most of his three day weekend so, so there you go. Uh, and anyway, this is the uh, WCPW Loaded, what is this, the 31st August? 31st edition of Loaded, and uh, this is the review, and uh, yeah, got a lot to cover on this one, got a lot of good stuff going on, so let's get right into it. We kick things off, so, uh, you know, last week was the Pro Wrestling World Cup Finals, and uh, afterwards, it was cut abruptly short, and I even mentioned that in my review, I was like, it just seemed kind of odd, and I was sure something happened, and sure enough it did, uh, except instead of Will Ospreay and the uh, SEC jumping in there, it was Prestige that came out and beat, and I'm not sure, did they beat down, yeah they did, they, they beat down uh, Osprey too, because they beat down uh, B Priestley and everything, and the SEC, uh, but uh, they beat down Kushida, they destroyed the World Cup uh, trophy, and then they, of course, they beat up Osprey and, and B, and uh, which, it's kind of funny that they would just abruptly end it, because I'm like, you know, I get it, you want to end the World Cup Finals on a good note, but it's like, you have got, like, you know, if you saw heat, there's still lots of heat on the Prestige right now for doing this. In fact, I mean, just on my Twitter account alone, I had, like, three different people ask me, like, you know, what my opinion on, or my, my opinion on this whole thing was. And they were, like, legitimately pissed off. And I'm like, they're, you know, right there, they're doing something right. Like, seriously. Because uh, I'm not going to lie, it was kind of, I kind of felt the same way. Like, the Mark and Smart side didn't know what, which way to go. Because it was literally just like, we just spent over half a year following this entire tournament and I'm all for like you know when you get to a you know a finale like that you can tarnish it whatever but it's like the first one you know and but then again it's like but what better way to get you know so much you know nuclear X-Pac heat on you know the prestige than you know to do that right there uh it worked it worked uh and once again I mean the fact that it got such a negative reaction from everybody you know what can you do? And I, I mean, I, I, I can't deny. I think it's a great idea. It really was. I mean, that's the smart side. The mark side of me, just like those motherfuckers, need to pay. We're gonna make them pay at some point. I hope Blompier does the right thing and really just pad like a thirty on two, three match or whatever. Whoever's involved, it's three. We'll fuck. We'll make it, we'll make it five. We'll we'll throw the entire prestige group in there and just have like the entire locker room just beat the shit out of them. Uh, we'll actually call back all the pro wrestling uh, tournament competitors. To show up and just beat the living shit out of them. Even the ones that like didn't get into the tournament, like the ones that had like you know have alternates, you know, replace them. We'll have them come back when they get better, and they'll just beat the shit out of the prestige. Uh, but no, I said, I, you know, I, I, I liked it. I mean, I think, I think right now, I think that was a, that was a smart move. It really was. It's progressing the storyline. It wasn't just done for no reason. It's progressing the storyline. So I like that. Uh, I love uh, Bradshaw's commentary during that post uh, World Cup beatdown. It was just. Uh, his voice was just filled with disgust, and he was just like, "I'm out of here." Like he, he, he literally was just it, it offended me. Like he, he was literally the voice of the people right there. You know, it, it, not to try to stack it up with a comparison, but like it really kind of reminded me of like when uh, Hogan turned heel in the NWO, and how the commentators were just shocked or whatever, and they're just like, you know, you, you know, Hogan, you can go to hell and all that stuff. It kind of took me back to that kind of a moment because once again. He was just like, you know, this is this is ridiculous. He kept, he kept saying like horse shit over. I don't think like censoring the shit part. I thought that was great. But he, I mean, but he was pissed. He was pissed. Like I think a lot of people were. He was just like, you know what? This is bullshit. This is horse shit. I think he said horse shit more than bullshit, but horse shit. And uh, yeah, he just unhappy. I, I liked it. To me, it, it had a, a very genuine feel to it. So I, I really dug that. Um, so, anyways, uh, yes, yeah, so that that went down. So Blompier, uh, you know. Has a little, you know, video that's, you know, taking place back in his office, and he said that, uh, you know, tonight he's pretty much suspended uh, Joe Hendren and El Aguero for the week. However, since, you know, uh, BT Gun is the hardcore champion, he's going to set the rematch with Prime Make tonight. That's going to be his punishment, which I think he's got a too light. I don't know, though. He had a pretty hardcore, brutal match, a brutal encounter with Prime Make, so I don't know, maybe. I still think he's punished a little bit more than this, but whatever. But anyway, he's you know he, he said that, you know he'll get back to this issue and he will come up with some kind of a solution. So I'm really looking forward to that. So we kick things off. It's uh, Drake and Angelico, and initially I was kind of like eh about this because we just saw this match like literally two or three weeks ago, and uh, Angelico beat Drake. 
Uh, however, uh, seeing where it leads, that's the one thing I never completely count out WC, or, sorry, WCPW ever. Like in the early review days, I would be like, I don't know about this. And then I'd be like, oh shit, like it, it did something, like it went somewhere. So I just learned now, like whenever it's something that I am kind of initially like, eh, about, I just kind of hold back for a second. Let's see where it's going. And then, you know, and it was kind of the same thing. I'm just like, well, you know, rematch, like so, you know, shortly after the first encounter. Uh, but uh, no, it was still a good match. And uh, right off the bat, I just love that whenever uh, Angelical came out on the stage, Drake comes out after him, and Angelical was like, comes off the stage and hits him and everything. Really cool little star right there. Uh, once again, Drake just looks impressive as hell. Like, I'm waiting for him to kind of get that push through the, the ceiling there. Uh, like, he, he, he had like a beautiful like double underhook suplex. I thought it was just great. Like, he just looks, he looks phenomenal in that ring. I'm just kind of waiting, waiting for it to, you know, it, it's going to click eventually for him. And when it does, it's going to be, it's going to be great. So, uh, but anyway, so this match, uh, not really much, you know, they, you know, they all hit their signature stuff, but uh, where the turning point was, they go outside and, at one point, Drake goes for like some kind of a weapon, and uh, and Jekyll kicks it away. But then Drake has tape with him. Now the commentators do mention like, oh wait, that, he has tape. What's he doing with tape? But then they don't ever mention it again, which is very odd because what happens is him and Jekyll's fighting outside, and Jekyll's kind of down for a second. So Drake, uh, very smartly, I must add, tapes Jekyll's foot to the guardrail. Like he gets it all taped up to it, and then he gets back in the ring. To take the count out victory, but they never once mention, or sorry, mention the fact that Angelo's taped to the guardrail. The commentators were just kind of like, "Well, Angelo's not, or Angelo's not getting back up." Or they said, "Angelico, sorry, uh, Angelico's not getting back up." I don't know what's a, it's a count out victory for Drake, and I'm just like, "Yeah, he clearly cheated, and they taped it there, and that was a great story." But they, I mean, and the fans clearly knew what was going on. They, you know, they were there, they saw it. But uh, anyway, and of course, Drake does get, or sorry, Angelico does get out of it, but it just wasn't quick enough. And of course, boom, he hits the ring. But sorry, too late. Drake wins by count out. And uh, that was another thing. I, you know, I was checking out some of the, uh, in fact, Friday and Saturday. I watched it Thursday, but you know, Friday and Saturday, I was kind of checking out Twitter to see what everybody's saying about the show. And for the ones who didn't watch it on Extra, which shame on you, but whatever. Um, and everybody was just like, well, this is what WWE does. 50-50 booking. I'm tired of like whenever there's a, a uh, phrase that the smarky fucking internet fucks pick up and they just run with it. 50-50 booking, playing hot potato. It's like whenever something like that kind of goes on. Like, don't get me wrong, this isn't really 50-50 booking because it's not like Drake picked up an even clean win. Like, no, he couldn't be Angelico without cheating to, you know, and to do it. So I don't know. I, I mean, wasn't a whole lot of people saying this, but just a few that were saying it, I just wanted to be like, listen, doesn't quite, you know, it's not the same thing because, you know, A, he didn't pick up a clean victory. He, you know, he had to tape him. It's a count-out victory, which we will talk about later. It leads somewhere else, too. So, I mean, I don't know. I just, I feel like people just want to bitch the bitch sometimes. But, uh, but anyway, so uh, Drake picks up a win, which I was happy for because when it comes to these uh, WCPW originals, I, I'm always kind of in their corner. Even if I, like, I do like Angelico. I think he's really cool, but... Drake, I'm sorry, I go for my boy Drake here. So we get a little uh, promo backstage. It's the uh, South Coast Connection, and uh, they're talking about how you know they, they showed up once. They had one appearance where they took uh, sort the Swords of Essex to the limit. And yeah, I was one that was completely surprised by this you know young tag team. Uh, turns out though they were uh, you know trained by uh, Will Osprey. They were good friends of Osprey, so uh, they're here to make another impact. You know, like you know. Here they are. They got you know a little bit more tr tr training underneath their belt. You know they're a little more focused, and now they're coming to you know to kick some ass. And up next, it is a uh, tag team triple threat match. Uh, number one contender uh, for a number one contender shot at the tag titles. And let me try to say this name without just completely butchering it. It's uh, D. Yoan Yuren D. Yuren. Lowen. The Young Lions, the Young Lions is the tag team of uh, Tarkin, Aslan, and Lucky Kid uh, go up against uh, the Southside Connection and Moss and Slater, the return of Johnny Moss now. So uh, finally they're back together as a unit. And uh, yeah, now here's the thing, uh, you know, once again, this is just me nitpicking. This isn't me back, this, this is a complaint. I get, I get accused for complaining a lot and this is just a nitpick. It's, you know, it's okay, the match was very enjoyable, but like, it was triple threat rules. You know, one, one person. I'm like, why aren't they all just like free for all in right now? Like, seriously, like, just go in there and just like, there's no DQ. Like, fuck it. You know, but I don't know. They were doing, they were doing the tagging out time thing, and which you know, whatever. But uh, I was just like, hold on. I was like, dude, just get in there. Like, just have six dudes fucking beating the shit out of each other. Everyone want to see. Just want to see the six dudes just tearing ass in there, and then 
whoever's lucky enough to pull out the you know victory will do it. But uh, but no, we get a we get a pretty uh, standard civilized match. We get a lot of tagging and outs and shit. So uh, so yeah, though so, uh, not a lot. I kind of figured because of the pre-match promo that it was going to go Southside Connection. Uh, and then I honestly figured that if it wasn't them, it'd be Johnny you know, or uh, Moss and Slater, uh, the former tag champions. Because I feel like, you know, the whole story is like, who could bring down War Machine? Well, of course, the former. Like, you know, the last one, didn't even, they didn't even get pinned for the title. You know, it was a, it was a ladder match they lost the you know, the belts to, or the lost, lost the belts in a ladder match. So, you know, they kind of have that, you know, claim of, like, no one's able, you know, been able to pin them or pin either man in the tag, you know, match. So, they had that kind of going for them. So, I figured, like, you know, if it wasn't Southside Connection, it'd probably be Moss and Slater. And boy, was I wrong altogether. It was the dark horse of this team that would go on the win. Um, talk a little bit about the match, I guess, itself. Uh, I will say South Coast Connection, phenomenal. Like, seriously, like, they just, they have this perfect chemistry together. And just the move they were pulling off was really impressive. Uh, but, of course, you know, once uh, Moss got in there, he just dominated. I love Johnny Moss. Like he's just—he's a beast. He goes in there and just whipping out. I love the—I uh, forget who's all. You know, once again, because everybody's kind of spread out. But he had a lot of guys outside, and uh, Ashley Dunn. He's about to jump over, and he gets caught by uh, Johnny Moss, and Moss ends up suplexing him up and then over onto the crowd. You know, all the, the group of people down below, which I thought was really awesome. Uh, however, the end comes. As Moss and Slater kind of got this in the bag, Lucky Kid comes out of nowhere and just rolls up uh, Moss. One, two, three, the young lions move on. And I was like, holy shit. And dude, the crowd was not happy. Booze. Just booze. Uh, Can't be doing it wrong. Man. Was it really doing really a heel team here? I wouldn't think. They're all pretty much faces. I think just, you know, the fact that the young lions are, even though I guess, you know, South Coast Connection's only been in the promotion for one for one match prior to this. You know, Lucky Kid and uh, Asin Tarkin, even though Lucky Kid has had uh, numerous matches here, it's, they still are kind of like, you know, outsiders, I guess. So, I don't know. Maybe that's why the crowd just turned ugly on this one, but uh, I'm okay with it. I mean, I'm all for opportunities. I can see, you know, the young uh, Lions who have had success in Germany. So, I mean, it's not like they're just thrown together and got up a, you know, a random victory. No, they've proven themselves elsewhere. And they're here where it matters in WCPW. So I would love to see you know them go on. Uh, now here's the thing: I don't know if they're going to their tag match before uh, refuse to lose, or afterwards, or if they're going to get just thrust into the match with them because uh, you know War Machine and the Young Bucks are going to fight each other then. So I don't know if they're going to try to get a shot before, which will kind of alter that card, or at least you know the title anyways uh, there, or if it will happen after or whatever. So really curious to see where they, you know where the placement that's going to be. So, but uh, yeah, no overall enjoyable match right there. Uh, now we're moving on. Oh, backstage, uh, Angelico he uh, was pretty pissed off about uh, losing via countout to Drake, and I just love how pissed off he is. He's just like, you know, Drake, I try to give you another chance, and this is what you do to me. Like I try to give you a chance to avenge your victory, legitimately, and I'm like. This is the same thing like Lethal did. Like Lethal's just like, all right, Drake, we're done. Shake my hand, and we're gonna put this. I'm like, this is Drake. Like, really? Are we really shocked? I gotta be like, if somehow I got in a match with Drake, and it wouldn't take, it wouldn't be much of a match. He'd just kick my ass. But like, it's the same if he cheated to beat me, right? And I'm just like, I can't believe he did that. It's like, well, why wouldn't you believe it? It's Drake. Like, this is what Drake does. The same guy for a year who's been, like, sneak attacking people. He's been running a prospect back from the era group. I mean, this guy, he yeah, had James R. Kennedy in his corner, for Christ's sake. I mean, this guy, he's a villain. He is the villain, like, seriously. And he's not out, and that's the reason he's not even, like, charismatic with the crowd. Like, he just doesn't give a fuck. He's out of fucks to give. He just, he's hated and he's evil. And they're just like, I can't believe he cheated the, you know, I can't believe he would go, take this route. He would take me to a guardrail. I'm like, yeah, he would. You know why? Because it's Drake. So, uh, but yeah, so anyway, but he uh, decides he's going to challenge uh, Drake to a Falls Count Anywhere match. Uh, not sure if it's going to be for a loaded or if we're going to do it for a refuse to lose, but either way, Falls Count Anywhere, which I'm really looking forward to. And once again, it goes back to, you know, Drake getting that victory, even it up one to one. Now this is gonna be the rubber match right here, and like I say it, it's leading somewhere. So I was all happy about that. So yeah, uh, big match right there, and uh, kind of I'm kind of rooting for Drake. I'm not gonna lie, I just feel like Angelico will eventually drop away. He'll go back to wherever he came from, and I feel like Drake will be here. So I'm kind of hoping Drake picks up the victory, but you know, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Uh, up next, it's Bad Bones going up against Martin Kirby. Uh, of course, you know, Bad Bones has a... I wouldn't really say aligned himself to Alex Gracie. He's been paid by Alex Gracie to attack Martin Kirby. So there's that. You know, that's why they're kind of, you know, they're, they're feuding right here. Of course, it was Bad Bones that uh, attacked uh, Kirby, you know, 
last week, I think, or maybe the week before. Uh, either way, it came after Kirby, you know, during his match with Alex Gracie. So, uh, you know, just kind of get a little uh, revenge, if you will, for that. Uh, one of my favorite little moments early on in the match, you're brawling outside, and Kirby runs from Bad Bones, but then he kind of like 619s around the outside post, but like he does it inside the ring instead and like, you know, ends up kicking Bad Bones back. I thought that was a really cool little moment right there. Uh, but no, in this match, like I said, for the most part, uh, Bones looking impressive as hell, taking down the smaller man in Kirby. Uh, I love Kennedy's commentary during this match too, because there's just like, he just kept, you know, he's, he's taking up for Bad Bones. He's just like, you know, the, the man, he, he isn't, this isn't even personal for him. This is all about money. And, you know, Bradshaw also said something along the lines like, you know, what, you, you talk to him? I thought you said, you know, he, you know, he charges for people to even talk to him. And he's like, yeah, I char you know, he, he charged me a few hundred quid. I'm just like, that's just hilarious. Like, I don't know, I just, I love Kennedy as a, as, a, as a commentator. Like, seriously, he's really growing on me. Like, going even beyond, like, you know, because once again, my, my perfect team right now is Bradshaw and Shane. But I'm not going to lie, Bradshaw and, uh, and Kennedy, they're, they're a perfect match for each other, too. So, I mean, I don't know. I love shit like that. But anyways, uh... Bad Bones, uh, you know, goes back in there uh, using his power, but once again, uh, Kirby's, you know, has to resort to his speed, agility, and, uh, you know, everything else to kind of get around that. At one point, Bad Bones goes to powerbomb Kirby, but Kirby kind of turns into like a Hercrona slash head scissors, uh, you know, landing uh, Bones right into the middle turnbuckle. However, Bones hits him with a double arm DDT for a clean one, two, three, and I was like, holy shit. Like, I've been wanting Bones to get, like, this push for a while now, like a good, clean victory over an established superstar, and I honestly, like, even watching this match, like, I'm like, I love you, Bones, but, you know, I'm sorry, I know Kirby's probably going to win this. No. And then I feel like if, if, if Bones did win, it'd be, like, some shenanigans, like some, you know, Gracie interference where he uses ball bat or something like that. No. Like, literally, it was a clean victory. Double underhook, bam, one, two, three, Oh, it was great. It really was. And uh, I think it's really good to see Bones pick up this legitimate victory. Because once again, I love Kirby. And he can surprise the hell out of you. But let's face it. I mean, this is... I, I like to think of wrestling, you know, it can be real. I, I, I love to live in kayfabe world. Bones is a bad motherfucker. I don't care what anybody says. Watch the German qualifier. Seriously, he put on a clinic there. And I'm just like, this is the bad Bones we have not been seeing in WCPW. He's been kind of neutered over here. He's been given the Drake treatment where it's like he's a good wrestler, but it's like they're just kind of jobbing him out. And no, here he looked like a bona fide badass. So, uh, yeah, took Kirby down, took him to school, pinned him one, two, three in the middle of the ring. And then Gracie comes out, just a smirk. I love it. And then, of course, he uh, picks up Kirby and hits him with a fall from Gracie just to add some insult to injury because Gracie's a dick. So, you know, that's what he does. So, uh, so yeah, there it was right there. Really, really good match right there. Uh, and then, of course, backstage, we're getting ready for the big main event, which is a hardcore uh, title rematch between BT Gun and Primate. But uh, some girl named Sarah from the medical staff, she said that Primate will not be cleared to uh, compete. You know, doctors have not cleared him at all. And then here comes Primate in a neck brace just running by growling, roaring, if you will. Like, the most terrifying fucking sight. Like, seriously. I, 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 I am following Primate on Instagram, where he's a normal guy, and he drives a car, and he makes comments. And I still see him as Primate here, and I'm, I'm, I'm still terrified. I'm still terrified of this guy. Like, seriously. If I ever went to a live show, I'd just wet myself. I'd be the guy with the wet pants in the front, because I'm just like, oh, God, this guy, he, he's going to eat me. He's a brutal murderer. He already killed two people. That's established. That is established in the WCPW universe. He has murdered two people. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to do some research. Uh, anyway, so he uh, comes to the ring, and of course, he's just... And of course, BT Gun's already in the ring, and he's just like, you know what? I'm going to win this thing by forfeit. Primate's not even cleared to wrestle, and of course, Primate comes out, which was just awesome. So it leads into our main event, the hardcore match for the hardcore title. BT Gun versus Primate, and uh, yeah, right off the bat, you know, BT Gun attacks him with chair shots, and he's like wrapping the neck around the, uh, or sorry, wrapping the neck around, that would just be brutal, wrapping the chair around the neck, and then, you know, heading him into the post and shit, you know, working on his neck and everything, uh, and at one point, you know, he's actually got him down, referees are trying to carry, or sorry, the you know, referee and the staff, or medical staff and the security are trying to, like, help Primate back, here's where it gets a little, like, maybe I'm just being nitpicky and... You know, I'm moving KK world too much, but it's like, at what point do referees declare the match over? Like, by referee stoppage. stoppage. Now, I can truly say I don't remember what referees were doing the officiating in those uh, in the Kirby match with Hendry or with the last match, but it was like, at this point, Primate's being carried away. 
after the referee has already been like pushing, you know, gun back from tacting and everything. And I'm like, would he not just ring the bell now? And then I'm like, okay, well, wait out now. But now the, the staff's carrying Primate away. And I'm like, okay, well, clearly the match is over. I'm looking from, like, through the eyes of a referee. I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe ring the bell. Like, match is over. Like, clearly he's not going to continue. And then BT Gunn runs over and attacks him and starts attacking him up on the stage. And I'm just like, huh, like, this match should have been over already. Like, BT Gunn, who was going to take a forfeit victory, could have taken that victory right there. It just, it just all those things. And once again, I guess, you know, different referees have their own decisions. Like, uh, I guess he was going to wait until he was clearly behind the curtain to be like, all right, now he's not going to return. Now it's referee stoppage. We'll end the match right there. But I, it, this is a funny little moment. That's all I'm saying. I, I'm just I'm a, I'm a wrestling nerd, so I picture like that part. But it just it's funny to me. Uh, anyway, so they get the bacon trays out. They start bashing each other in the head with that. Uh, at one point, uh, primate puts gun upside down in a trash can. Does a baseball slide into it, and then you know clobbers him with that. Um, they busted the table out at one point, which I you know really dug that. Uh, hadn't used it yet. It just said I love that. That's what I love the most. Is like I, I see a lot in these shows where they just pull a table out and just use it instantly. It's like you're playing a video game or some shit like that. No, no, I like the table to come out and then sit there for a while, ominously, just in the corner. And then comes the best fucking part of this match. Like seriously, I was so happy when this. I yelled at my girlfriend, like, "Hey, hey, sweet, get in here, watch this." And she watched it with me. She was not impressed, but this one moment was the coolest moment I have seen so far. Probably one of my favorite moments in WCPW history. So, BT Gun comes out, he has the you know the thumbtacks, and he. Sprinkles them right there on the on the on the, on the canvas, and then of course Primate comes up and starts battling. And what we're they're trying to clobber each other, or they're trying to put the tax each other's mouth, or what they're trying to do. And of course they're each getting stopped, and then they're both are on their knees, and then like they just go for each other's trunks, and they pull the trunks open and throw the tax in there. And I'm just like, oh son of a bitch. And then it, they just sit there, and what's gonna think like that's uncomfortable enough. I'm just picturing myself with thumbtacks in my trunks. And I'm already unhappy, but then they kind of stand up, and they just look at each other, and then they kick each other in the dick. And it was the greatest moment ever. I had rewind it. I rarely do the rewind. I'm usually just like, I'm pretending like I'm watching a live, and I just watch it all the way through. I rarely go back and rewind. I rewound this thing like twice. Three times, I think. And one of them was like, hey, get in here, check this out. And of course, she just didn't care because she hates wrestling. But I was just like, this is the greatest thing ever. Oh my god, it was the greatest moment. It was this double dick kick with thumbtacks. Oh, I just, I, it was the, the pain. I could not, I, I couldn't imagine. I just couldn't imagine right there. Uh, and they kept battling. I was like, I, I, that's the movie, the end of it. I'd be like, you know what? Tap it out. It's end it. Here's your, your title. No, they keep going. Uh, oh, yeah, just incredible. Uh, BT, I think he's like a super kick at one point. And I thought, like, well, maybe that might be it. Because I was like, clearly they're not going to, you know, just take the title off of Primate just to put, you know. But uh, no, Primate rallies back and ends up slamming BT through the table. One, two, three. Primate retains the title, or I guess regains the title, I should say. And uh, yeah, two time. He's a two time hardcore champion now, uh, which I'm all about. So uh, yeah, uh, Primate wins. Match of the night. Match of the night. Uh, so happy. You know, I'm wrong. I mean, even though I was like, I didn't think, you know, Primate was going to regain, or regain, sorry. Uh, I was just like, I'm glad. Like, I'm so happy. Like, to me, this is the best way it could have ended. Like, it was just a brutal fuck. And it's like, dude, like, I wasn't expecting the match to be that, that brutal. Like, this seems like if they keep doing hardcore matches each week, like, they just have to, they have to keep changing it up. But it's like, you can only do so much. And I don't want you guys to push it too far because I don't want them to hurt themselves. But it's just like, I never expected to get this crazy. And I was like, oh my god. Tax in the dick. That's that's how you that's how you win a match right there. That should have been his finisher right there. Just tax in the dick. Uh, no, great match. Loved it. Like I said, match of the night. Really enjoyed it. Um, my thing is now though, I'm just curious. If anybody happens to know, or if anybody you know can get a hold of the WCPW crew or whatever, like is the 24/7 rule back in effect? Cause I I think people misunderstood. Like I, I had nothing against the 24/7 rule initially at all. My whole thing was they just never announced it. It just came out of nowhere with no announcement. But now I feel like it's just not going to be there at all. And I'm like, no, I want to see this. Like, I want to see the 24-7 rule in effect. I want to see goofy fuckers like Jack the Jobber try to, you know, go for it. I want to see that. I want to see the Attitude Era, you know, Crash Holly style, hardcore 24-7 matches. And I'm all for it. But, you know, like I said, just it came out of nowhere. And now it seems like it kind of faded away completely. So I'm hoping... Now that Primate's champion again, we can get some more goofy, or maybe not even goofy, just some badass street brawls, and then like he just defends the title that way. 
like literally just standing over motherfuckers. Like people just keep coming after him out of the woodwork. He's just and he's not running. That's the difference. It's like Crash Hollywood run. He doesn't. Primate will just bash people into the you know, their skulls into like the brick wall and he'll stand over them. Title of. That's what I want to see right there. That's what I want to see. So, either way, uh, awesome, awesome match right there. Uh, overall, a really good uh, solid episode loaded. It really was. It was a good uh, follow up from the Pro Wrestling World Cup. Everything's moving forward right now. You know, Drake. Every match for a purpose. Drake and Angelico, or Angelico, whatever you want to say. You know, that's leading to the False Count Anywhere match. You know, we got new number one contenders aside from the Young Bucks as well in the Young Dragons, uh, and or sorry, the Young Lions. And, and then uh, of course, you know, we know the Bad Bones, Gracie, Kirby storyline is far from over. Gracie, you know, attacking Kirby afterwards. And then of course, you know, Prime. He's hardcore champion, baby. And of course, we still have Legero and. Hinder, I should just say the prestige, the pre prestigious uh, punishment coming up next week. So once again, everything is moving forward, and that is what I love about WCPW. It never feels like there's any dead space. It, it, there's never any wasted whatever. It's all moving towards something. So I'm really loving that. It's all moving toward uh, Refuse to Lose, which, you know, is going to be here before you know. I think it's October 2nd. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to that. So, but anyways, there you have it. Guys, let me know what you thought of the uh, episode loaded in the comment section down below. And, uh, yeah, don't forget to tune in uh, here in a little bit. I'll be dropping my unofficial top ten. Uh, that thing is so wacky right now. Like, it, the, the, the rankings are just, they're, they're, they're still settling, so there's a lot of movement. Movement without any cause, but whatever. Tune in and know what I'm talking about. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, I'm assuming Loaded's going to be this week as well on Thursday. So I'll catch you guys next week with another uh, episode or another review. Uh, that's all I got. Uh, share and subscribe if you haven't already. Show this video that thumb and love. And, uh, yeah, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. It's all down there. And it's all I got. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.